the good news in Delphi 64-bit on Windows is that it's the same programming language Delphi for 32-bit Windows and 64-bit Windows. It's the same FireMonkey uh, business application platform for 32-bit and 64-bit Windows. It's the same VCL for 32-bit and 64-bit Windows, the same DB Express, the same DataSnap, the same complete RTL, and the same Windows API that is embodied in the Windows unit and other Windows API interface units that come with Delphi. So moving your 32-bit applications to 64-bit is easy. Upgrade to XZ2, and you can be on the road to 64-bit Windows immediately. Load your project up, set the target platform to 64-bit, say build. What's good is the fundamental data types are all the same as 32-bit. So in 64 is still 64 bits, and strings are still strings, and integers, long ints, and cardinals are 32-bit. Uh, the try exception block, try accept and try finally, work the same in 32 and 64-bit, even though the exception handling model is different in 64-bit windows. We take care of all of that in the compiler and the runtime. The runtime library, all the standard units that use sysutils classes, they all have 64-bit and 32-bit editions. So again, in many cases, all you'll do is, uh, is rebuild your projects. Now, what's different? So native int on 32-bit windows is 32-bit. Native int on 64-bit windows is 64-bit with Delphi. So pay attention to uh, your use of native int and native unsigned int. Pointers are 32-bit on 32-bit windows. They're 64-bit on 64-bit windows. Dynamic arrays use 64-bit indexing on 64-bit windows. A floating point is double precision on 64-bit windows. And the tag property has been changed from integer to native int. So the tag property on 32-bit windows is a 32-bit entity and 64-bit on 64-bit windows with Delphi. Some things to pay attention to, if you've got code that assumes that the size of a pointer is equal to a size of an integer, well, on 64-bit windows, an integer is 32 bits, and the size of a pointer is 64 bits. If you're doing any special casting, you'll want to make sure that you handle that appropriately by using, uh, using size of. Uh, all code in the process must be 64-bit, and if you're in 32-bit windows, all code in that process must be 32-bit. You can't mix 32 and 64-bit code in the same process. If you're building DLLs, you need to compile them for 32-bit and compile them for 64-bit to use them. If you have any ActiveX controls, if you've got any third-party components with uh, runtime packages and design time packages, uh, you'll need those uh, to be 32-bit and 64-bit versions and use them in the right process. In 64-bit windows with Delphi 64, there's only one calling convention. So the compiler will ignore register, Pascal, C decal, standard call. Those are all ignored in the world of 64-bit uh, of land. But leave them in your source code so that when you're building 32-bit applications, those uh, calling convention declarations will still work. If you're doing anything with the Windows API, if you call our Delphi RTL inter interfaces to the Windows API, the RTL code will do the right thing. So you don't have to worry if you're calling standard Windows messages, standard Windows functions, then uh, the code will be generated properly and the RTL will handle it. If you're doing any special low-level operations, you're doing your own send message, you're creating your own uh, user-defined messages, if you're playing around with the Windows message record and cracking it, just know that there's 32-bit versus 64-bit Windows for the different fields for LParam and WParam. I'm now in, uh, in the IDE. And again, it looks just like uh, the ID might be used to if you're not on XZ2. And we can say File New, but there's some new things now. VCL Form and FireMonkey High Def and 3D Applications. And so let's start first with a VCL Form application, and we'll go and put a button down to the caption, and let's put a T edit box. This is the sort of standard uh, uh, Delphi style application. We'll, and then we'll put a list box. And we'll do the click handler, which will say listbox one dot items dot add. And we'll take the edit box one's text property. We can run this as 32-bit application. And if we did the one light of cone correctly, it uh, adds the box. If we bring up the Windows Task Manager and we look at the processes, our our project. Uh, 
project 2.exe, it says it's a star 32, which says this is a 32-bit process that is running. Right. Let's go back to the ID. Notice there's a new uh, node in the in the project window called target platform. If we want to add a for VCL, we'll add a 64-bit windows. There's only two choices for VCL. And it activates the 64-bit version. Let's go and compile and run our application using the 64-bit Delphi compiler. And now we've got uh, this running application. If we look at the task manager again, now project 1.exe doesn't have the star 32, so that's telling us that Windows believes, and I believe, that this is a 64-bit application now that it's compiled. All right, we can do this with FireMonkey as well. We'll say FireMonkey HD application. And we'll go in and we will say, let's put an edit box up again. Okay. Using FireMonkey, we'll put the edit box, we'll put a T button, and we'll set the text property of the button to click me. And we'll put a list box. And then again, we'll go to the button handler and say list box one.items.add edit one.text right, and we'll go and run this 32-bit windows and it should work right. and then again when we bring up the task manager project 3 magazine now is a 32-bit FireMonkey application so we can go and change the target platform to uh, our choice 64-bit windows we'll go and uh, Set that target, hit compile and run. Application now is a 64-bit version. It still works. Go back to the task manager. And now our project 3.exe doesn't have a star 32. It's a 64-bit uh, it's a 64 -bit FireMonkey application running on Windows. So VCL and FireMonkey, both supporting 32-bit and 64-bit on Windows.